I V M. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to ask everyone for a quick favor. We're running a brand survey right now and would really appreciate it if you could let us know what you think about the advertising on IVM. Go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey and do let us know. As part of this, we'll be selecting 10 random participants and sending them some IVM swag. So do fill out those surveys. Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach, and welcome to another Hot Seat episode. Today in the hot seat, we have Rohan Gaurav. And Rohan asks a very interesting question, a question that we get asked all the time. We know it is wrong to do it, but why do we still do it? Why? Is there any solution to stop anyone, myself or somebody else, from doing that? For example, we know that smoking is bad. We know that drinking too much is bad. We are addicts in this. But then what is wrong? Why do we continue to smoke? What is going on in our mind? And this is a typical question that we get, especially when people want to give up their bad habits. And when I started coaching at that point of time, I told everybody, you know, guys, if you're coming to me to solve your bad habit, don't bother. I'm not here to solve your bad habits. I am here to only improve your good habits. And this is because bad habits cannot be stopped unless you find a solution for why you started in the first place. Let me explain this. So very often we think of bad habits as you know, an addiction or a thing that we are now stuck with or um, there's an element of, you know, you know, a taboo that's there in our addictions. But the important thing is to realize that the habit started off at some stage because there was a need in us. There was a need for us to actually do those things. So for example, a person who is addicted to having alcohol every single day after work, very often, how did that start? That started because they came back from work one day and said that, you know what, today was a really hard day. I feel that I deserve this drink. And they would have a drink. And then slowly, slowly, they started having more and more hard days. Then it became like, you know, dude, today was such a hard day that I need two drinks. And then it went from one drink to two drinks. And then it just slowly, slowly started progressing. What was the need for that drink? Basically, that drink was nothing but a full stop for the person, for their working day to end and their home day to start. There was a need. There was an actual physical need for the person to make a mental shift from work mode to home mode. And that's what the purpose of that drink was. Now, slowly, 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 the purpose has disappeared, but the drink has continued. So all we have to do is find a solution for that purpose. Why did the person start drinking in the first place? If it was a full stop, is there another way of creating a full stop? Can you instead not come home directly, but go to the gym and work out at that point of time? Not come home directly, but maybe go for a walk. Or as soon as you come home, not pour yourself a drink, but instead go and have a bath, change your clothes, and then give your kid a hug, wife a hug, somebody a hug. For others, smoking could have been started because of a confidence issue. You know, you had a confidence issue. You didn't know how to gel with people. You were wondering, you know, will you be part of this group, with part of this crowd? And then slowly, slowly had your first cigarette with them, you know, for a bonding purpose and you continued. Now that first group that started has disappeared out of your life. You're no longer in touch with them. You've been working for the last 20 years. Your smoking has increased. All of that's taking place. But why you started was from a social confidence issue. If the social confidence issue is still there, Do other things to try and boost yourself. You know, maybe start focusing on your health. Maybe start powerlifting. Maybe start going for runs. Do things that are the exact opposite of what it is that you decided to do as a compensation, which was in this case, smoking. You will soon see that the reliance on that bad habit disappears. Which is why I typically call all bad habits a crutch. You know, like for example, when you break your leg and you're hobbling along, one leg is in a cast, You need a crutch in order to walk and move around. But once that leg has healed, you can't continue using that crutch. You need to learn to let go of the crutch. But imagine your leg has not healed. And now I suddenly pull the crutch away from you. And now you're balancing on one leg with a broken leg on the side. Is that going to work? That's not going to work. And that's typically how we try and break our bad habits. We try and use brute force. We try and, you know, coax ourselves out of it. And we try and yank the bad habit out of our life without making ourselves stronger. Without making ourselves strong enough that we don't require that bad habit. 
And hence, we move from one bad habit to another, to another, to another. We might give up drinking and get into drugs. We might get up drugs and get into smoking. I have seen this happen with so many people. Instead, what we have to do is focus on not just pulling away the bad habit, but understanding that it is serving a purpose. And if we can solve that purpose, we have solved the need for this bad habit. Now, Rohan's question was, why do we continue doing this, even though we know it's bad? And this is the reason why none of those cigarette smoking, you know, those statutory warnings have really helped or worked. Because what happens when you see that? Everybody knows that they're going to get cancer. Everybody knows that it's going to happen to them. It is something that they're doing bad, but they still continue. So it's not a function of not having enough data. Right? Maybe we don't have enough data on things like sugar and sugar addictions. Sure. Now we're slowly getting there. We're getting more aware of these things. But we definitely know about alcohol. We definitely know about smoking. So then why do we continue this? We continue this because the requirement of that broken leg, the requirement of not being strong enough, the requirement of a crutch was far more important than what the side effects of this particular bad habit did. The last thing about bad habits is that all bad habits have a future consequence, but a present pleasure. That means it feels damn good to have seven tequila shots right now because, you know, well, you're going to party and you're going to dance and all of that. But you're not going to feel so good the next day. So the present feels good. The future does not feel so good. Similarly, it's smoking. The present is being taken care of, but the future is not going to be. So you're getting immediate gratification from these things. But when you think about good habits, they're a pain. Why? Because there's pain in the present, but the gratification's in the future. It's the exact opposite of a bad habit. So it's quite interesting the way the bad habits work. Basically, if you want to give up one of these bad habits, first figure out why you want to give it up. Because my kids are telling me to, because my wife is telling me to, because so-and-so is telling me to, not going to work. You have to figure out why you want to give it up. Once you figure out why you want to give up that bad habit, only then start making a change. Figure out what are the things that you can become stronger in, where are the compensations coming from, what do you need to work on in yourself, only then move forward. If you want your question to be answered on one of the Hot Seat episodes, check out the link below in this podcast and come join me. I can't wait to hear your question. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM Podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Ashton Doc on Twitter and Instagram. You can find lots more information on my website, awesome180.com or check out different content on my YouTube channel called A-W-E-S-O-M-E-180. That's Awesome 180. Hey, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On this round is on me, Shelly Chopra shares with Gauri how they hit $750 million on She The People TV. We have a new show, The Last Brand Standing. Anupam Gupta and Ambi Parmeshwar get together and discuss some of the biggest and most public feuds in Indian brand history. Do check that out. Taste the lip-smacking palate of Karachi with Bilal Hassan on Naan Curry with Sadaf and Archit. On Misconduct, learn all about Dawood Ibrahim's sister, Hasina Parker with Ragvi and Nisha. Is the Indian constitution queer-friendly? Find out on the Longest Constitution podcast with Priya Mirza. And on Audio Gyan, Harish S., design head at Cred, talks about his Carnatic rock band and design as an art form. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any other show for that matter, please do tell a friend. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors on the network this week, Siet, Cred, Bank of Baroda, Quarter, CoinSwitch, Kuber, and Intuit India. Thank you so much for making this possible. Do you like true crime stories? Do you like to learn about the people behind some horrible, awful crimes? More specifically, women that may have committed these crimes. Actually, Indian criminals that are women? Then we'd like to welcome you to our podcast, Misconduct. My name is Raghavi. And I am Nisha. We cover themes like murder, decoity, drug trafficking, financial fraud, kidnapping, and many more. You can catch us every Wednesday on the IVM Podcast Network or wherever you get your podcast.